7-Eleven, everybody, a pair of subway stabbings in Times Square just hours apart, calling into question now the recent crime numbers being touted by the NYPD. Let's take a look right here, okay? Since last year, the NYPD says incidents are down 7%. When compared to pre-COVID, crime on the subway is down double digits by 11%. But here to give us more insight on subway safety is NYPD Transit Chief Michael Kemper. Good morning, Chief Kemper. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Chief, I want to, before we get to the crime numbers in the subway and everything else, of course, I want to talk about yesterday's probationary officer, Edgar yeah. Ordonez, who died while in that training uh, activity yesterday. What do we know about that case? What do we know about that recruit? Well, first off, thank you for uh, starting with that. Um, this, uh, what occurred yesterday, uh, is tragic on, you, you know, just so many, so many levels. Uh, Officer Edgar Ordonez, 33 years old, in the police academy, uh, set to graduate on Monday with his class, uh, was up in the Bronx at Rodman's Neck yesterday. Uh, there were routine training exercises. He had a medical episode. After the training exercises, he was taken to a local hospital and, you know, tragically, uh, he's, uh, was pronounced deceased. Mm -hmm. You know, as I sit here right now, I'm thinking about Officer Adonis's family and his fellow uh, academy uh, classmates. My thoughts and prayers are with them. The mayor in his uh, post yesterday on X talked about heat playing mm -hmm. a potential factor here. How are you looking at heat as a factor and how we may alter training in extreme heat? So look, after an incident like this, right now, Dan, it's, it's too soon to tell what the cause of death was. All we know is that um, he died after a training exercise and you know I'm certain the department's going to look at everything that occurred yesterday and you know make uh, you know alterations to training if they you know if there is a need okay all right let's move to crime underground we've had two stabbings that we recently covered Times Square Port yeah. Authority caught one guy you're still looking for another the guy you caught yeah tell me about him lengthy rap sheet yeah listen the guy we caught um, you know he's the poster child for everything I talk about and we talk about when we talk about repeat offenders and recidivism uh, 24 year old stabbed someone uh, two nights ago overnight about three o'clock in the morning uh, uh, on a train platform in a Times Square station uh, officers responded they did a great job they uh, uh, got uh, images of the perp they did a canvas they found him a knife on him uh, 24 years old like I said uh, he's got upwards of 20 arrests in his uh, life in the last 12 months this individual has been arrested I think seven or eight times and when you look at the arrest that he, for, yeah, when you look at the arrests robbery uh, two separate crimes with knives involved with stabbings uh, in the last he's got open court cases and yet here he is out again two nights ago stabbing someone else but my issue is you go and you catch this guy right and you say the numbers are down but for yep. me as a mom with two little kids yep. trying to get on the subway I know that this guy's gonna be let back out and back on the subway yeah so and and again that speaks to recidivism and it speaks to uh, the other stakeholders in the justice system doing their jobs. If you're, anyone's asking what the police is, are doing, our cops are working so hard. They do extraordinary work. They're making arrests in the subway system at or near historic highs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, arrests are up 50% this year versus last year. So if anyone's asking what your cops are doing, we're out there making arrests. The better question people should be asking is what are happening to these arrests once they're made? Yeah, and I've heard you talk about this a, yeah. a number of times, right? And, and, and the NYPD really hammering that point home. When you look at the numbers, though, they are down, right? Yeah. So that is good. But how are you dealing with the perception issue that Callie just talked about, right? So you look at the numbers, you say, okay, but then you hear about this Times Square incident, and you hear about yeah. an incident on the A train in Washington Heights, yep. wherever it may be. How are you dealing with the perception issue at the same time? So, look, that's a great question, and, and I'm, you know, have to get this out. Crime is down in the subway system this year, 7% versus last year. And that equates to just about 80 less major crimes this year in the subway system. And that didn't just happen. That was through tremendous investments by Mayor Adams, Police Commissioner Gabon, a thousand additional cops infused into the subway system starting the first week in February. And they paid big, big dividends with, uh, with this crime reduction. But look, when you have incidents like this, it's, uh, it weighs heavily on people's minds. It does, it messes with their psyches. And, you know, it, that goes to fear and perception. Well, yeah, but here's the thing, right? You, you tout the numbers down, yep. right? And you say the numbers are down. We've made a number of arrests. But at the same yeah. time, you're saying that recidivism is an issue. So is that person in the subway committing a crime, being put back on the street, and then, yeah, your numbers are down in the subway, but that crime is going somewhere else in New York. Are you seeing that happen? No, I mean, it, it's just we're seeing the same people committing the same crimes. We're arresting people 
dozens of times. We've arrested people that have been arrested over a hundred times in their life. Like, how is this happening? There needs to be consequences. Without consequences, where is the deterrence? When you say you flood the system with extra cops, yeah. right, where are we going? Are there hot spots that we yeah. should know about? Clearly Times Square is one of them. We've been there several times covering various yeah. incidents. Well, can, do we have iconic train stations, Times Square, mm -hmm. Grand Central, uh, you know, throughout the city. Uh, but look, we're... Uh, we had incidents we, in Spanish Harlem recently. Yeah, listen, we take great pride in, uh, you know, deployment. Proper deployment is critical to our mm -hmm. success. We're looking at crimes where are they occurring, community complaints, quality of life complaints. Where are those crimes occurring? Yeah, so, and we're a dynamic police department. We're shifting resources literally every single day as needs arise. We could have an issue that occurs in Brooklyn right now. We have the ability right now with one phone call to shift resources either for uh, an extended period of time or not. But we're always looking uh, at our deployment. You know, we, we talked a lot uh, about bag checks, right? Especially when yeah. the National Guard went down, there were yeah. these bag checks. Did anything, are they still happening, number one? Yeah. Uh, at the same level and rate that they were in the beginning? Yes. Okay. The, the answer is yes. And, did you ever find anything from those bag checks, a weapon, uh, anything that may have that shown, okay, this is working? Yeah, so uh, there have been a couple of arrests uh, at these bag checks. No uh, uh, explosives, uh, no weapons or, or guns that were detected. That's a good thing. But the, the, the real benefit that I see that we're getting from this is just the presence of the cops at the turnstile area, which our riders love to see. It offers them safety, security, and their presence is setting the tone of law and say, order. When you say weapons, you found guns or knives? From the, straight from the yeah. bag checks? No, we have not found any guns. And again, that, that's a good thing, but again, it's setting the tone of law and order immediately when our riders are renting these subway stations. So these bag checks have been in place, mm -hmm. they're in place right now, and it's gonna continue. The MTA talks about more and more cameras going up in cars, yeah. uh, more state-of-the-art equipment going Love down there. It. Is it helping? Absolutely helping. What, uh, is the video yielding arrests? All, all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the video, I can't speak more about uh, the quality of video uh, that the MTA has installed in the subway system. People take note. The New York City subway system literally has thousands of video cameras throughout the uh, uh, subway system. They're installing them on trains. Uh, by the end of the year, they hope to have every train car outfitted uh, with video. The video that we're getting is a deterrent, and it's a great investigative uh, piece also. We, we make arrests, we make identifications yeah. all the time. And also these videos are, are not just solely focused on crime. They help us find missing children, so, answer so many questions. I guess the question is, is, you know, you listen to you and it's like, well, the subway sounds like a great place to be. Yeah. But you talk to a New Yorker and they say, well, no, it isn't because there's a mental health issue on the yeah. subway, right? So I guess is there needs to be a better campaign of, of what you're doing yeah. and, and especially combating the mental health component of it. Yeah, so, and, and that goes to perception and fear and, and that's why I'm here right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're accessible, we're transparent, we're visible. I'm here asking the questions. The public has to hear uh, what's going on uh, right from us. Mm -hmm. We have to have a platform to tell our story. Here's our story. Crime is down in the subway system 7% this year. Crime is down versus two years ago. Overall crime is down versus five years ago, pre-COVID, in, in the subway system. Listen, are we where we want to be? Where we want to be is no crime, no. Yeah. Do we still have a lot of work to do in the subway system to get to where we want? Absolutely. But are we making progress? Yes, we are certainly making progress. And let me say this also, this prog I have to say this, you could have the best plans, but without the cops getting the job done, our cops, the men and women of the NYPD mm -hmm. patrolling the subway system, long hours. It's very, very hot. They do a difficult job. They're focused. They're getting the job done. I mean, you know, hats off to them. Exceptional All human right. beings. Chief Kemper, we got to leave it there. You mentioned the heat, too. We could talk about yeah. air conditioning on the platforms. That's beyond your purview. Different segment. Yeah, well, there's air conditioning on the trains. <laughs> I, that know. I know. Chief Kemper, great to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much.